Spidey is back with another movie review from this collection right here. Indestructible Man starring Lon Chaney Jr. 1956. It's queued up in my DVD player just waiting for me to show you some clips. <laughs> it's a pretty good movie actually. Ah, oh, 1956 but I'm still going to rip it apart. <laughs> it doesn't make any difference. Oh, I got to give a shout out to Isaiah. Somebody I work with at the store. Hi, Isaiah. How's it going, man? <laughs> anyway, yeah, there's the backside. Of course, I've done, what, a ton of these goddamn movies over the years. It's actually queued up in my DVD player. We will get to the opening credits and some of the movie. After I kind of explain a little bit about the movie. How about that? Now, there's all the different movies on the back. You know, the running times. You know, what idiots are starring in the movie. <laughs> You've seen a ton of reviews from this movie. It's kind of a cool movie. I mean, actually, actually a box set, I should say. I got it all flattened out because it's, there's nothing. All the discs are over there. <laughs> I just didn't want to ding around here. Anyway. Jesus Christ, I'm getting thin, folks. Well, everybody knows Spidey's on a new uh, uh, vitamin regimen. <laughs> you know, uh, just look at my rolling videos. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> Oh, I just took one of my uh, my hormones and I'm all loopy as hell. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Bradley, I'll explain more of that in the next day or two, uh, stuff like that. So, it's pretty much Lon Chaney Jr. Okay, let's put this goddamn box down. Lon Chaney Jr. is basically a convicted armor uh, car robbery suspect. Actually, he's already in... Yeah, they kill him and two other thugs killed that they, they stole six hundred thousand dollars from the armored car right of course they killed people on the way too uh, i'm sure the the guards that you know the the security people that were in inside the armored car of course so they've been con he's been convicted all three have been convicted of murder but he has to pay the rap he has to pay the rap because he's in prison in jail waiting for the death penalty the following morning he's already been convicted his lawyer is completely corrupt He's part of the whole scheme. He, he sent Lon Chaney Jr. out with the other two thuggy dooters to rob the armored car. And of course, <laughs> Lon Chaney Jr. got caught, but he stashed all the money in the sewer systems, you know, where no one actually knows where it is, right? And we'll get to some clips. Just trust me. Just trust me. So he's... Uh, we're not <laughs> it's actually a pretty good movie. He's in prison. It kind of starts out with him behind bars and his lawyer, which is actually part of the four-man armed robbery uh, thug uh, league. <laughs> He's talking to him. He's actually the lawyer that set Lon Chaney Jr. up. And the other, him and the other two guys are scot-free, of course, you know. And Lon Chaney Jr. is just pissed off as hell because he's going to be executed and gas chambered the next morning. You know, the following morning, whatever. So he, they come, the lawyer comes and visits him and it's really funny as hell because Lon Chaney Jr., you know, you know his face, man. He's got the, he's got this goddamn mean looking. You know, he's like, he looks like he's always worried. He's got so, so much stress in his life. You know, I remember all the Wolfman movies. We always look so tense and everything, like the world, the way the world is on his shoulders. <laughs> he looks well. This is about ten years off the road, so he still looks the same, except he's just, you know, ten years older, twenty years older, or whatever. Anyway, uh. So we'll, we'll kind of discuss more of the movie as it goes along, but we'll, we'll start with the opening credits. I'm not going to actually, I'm going to go back to the opening credits. You can listen to the music, and then we'll look at some of the damn scenes. How about that? Okay, here we go. You can't... Here we go. This is the opening credits on the TV screen. You know, the name of the movie and uh, all the people that star in it and everything. Damn, man, I'm getting thin. Ah. Oh, my God. This sounds so tragic and... F it's just like... Oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Got a lot of good news to talk about besides the damn movie review. Oh my, oh, oh, can't show you those, sorry. I got, I can't go, <laughs> uh, do we have to listen to this anymore? 
this is just the opening uh, soundtrack and the uh, you know the the actors' names and that kind of shit. I'm gonna turn down the volume because it's driving me nuts. We'll get to some of the scenes in just a minute, but anyway, he gets convicted and he gets executed the next morning. And of course, before he can be buried, these two corrupt scientists steal his body from the morgue. They pay off the morgue attendant to take the body because they want to try to, apparently they're trying to cure cancer, these two idiot scientists. And they're down in the basement of some kind of a warehouse or something. Wouldn't you think that they would be in a nice medical facility? You know, other doctors and, you know, and professional medical equipment and stuff like that. But they're actually in the basement, you know, because they're, they're like Frankenstein and his assistant. That's really what they are, really. <laughs> oh, God, these two idiots. Lon Chaney Jr. Well, actually, they bring the body back to the, to the basement uh, laboratory. And they... <laughs> <laughs> they basically bring him back to life because he has some kind of a technique. Apparently, they're trying to cure cancer. But they actually bring him back to life. And he's fucking pissed off as hell. He can still remember what all, this thug he, uh, all, the, all the thugs did to him. You know, getting him uh, executed and stuff like that in jail and prison. The gas chamber at the beginning of the movie. And, of course, they bring him back to life. He can't talk because apparently uh, when he got... Uh, when they brought him back to life... His vocal cords were charred, but he still has his memory and everything. And he only wants to kill the three people that set him up, right? <laughs> it's great, man. He's, you got to see his face, man. He's always got these squishy little eyes when he's chasing these guys around the city and stuff. I guess in Los Angeles or something like that, 1956. He's determined to kill them because of what they did to him at the beginning of the movie, you know? Setting him up for the, setting him up as a fall guy. Yeah. Okay, let's discuss my thin body. Now, as you know, Bradley is on, you know, uh, he's transitioning, you know, to become a transgender woman. So I'm actually taking supplements. You all know about that if you watch my rowing videos. I seem to be getting thin. I mean, Jesus Christ. The suit is actually fitting uh, tighter, but for some reason... I look like, I, I, I'm not really sure. This is the weirdest I've ever looked <laughs> since I started taking these supplements seven weeks ago, these fem female hormones and stuff like that. Uh, you all know what's going on. Just look at my rowing videos, right? Like I said, uh, well, forget about that. You can talk to Bradley tomorrow night or the night after. He'll explain the updates on everything. But right now, we're going to talk about the indestructible man. So, anyway... Should we show some scenes? <laughs> and then I can explain more of the plot of the movie, and I think you'll like it, man. It's actually a pretty cool movie, man. I really like this movie a lot. Okay, let's just do this. Let's go back. No, no. We don't want to do that. Sorry about that. I'm kind of out of whack here. Okay, we're going to let those... Uh, yeah, never mind about that. Let me just fast forward to the very first actual acting frame. I like this movie a lot, folks. It's pretty damn fucking cool, man. Yeah, let's go to the next frame. Sorry about the, uh, the awful quietness in the studio. I'm just... Okay, here we go. On the day before the butcher was to be executed, he was visited by his attorney, Paul Lowe, at the death house. It was at this first meeting the butcher men case took its first switch. <laughs> this is his attorney, Paul Lowe. I told you set him up for the, the fall. Oh, Lon Chaney, man. Look at the look on his face, man. He just wants to put his hands through that fucking barn and strangle his lawyer, man. The, gang, the guy who set him up. Part of the four-man gang that robbed the armored car. Over a half a million dollars. Greed. You wanted to keep the whole $600,000 for yourself. The boys got sore and I don't blame him. 
<laughs> it was all your idea, man. You set me up, you motherfucker. You, I'm gonna turn the volume down. That fucking scumball liar, lawyer right there is part, like I said, part of the four-man armed robbery uh, thing. He set Lon Chaney up as the fall guy so him and the other two guys can get away scot-free. And they don't because Lon Chaney, like I said, because Lon Chaney comes back to life because of the Frankenstein and his assistant bring him back to life. And he's on, he's on a quest to kill all three of them. Which he actually <laughs> he kills two of them. And the other one, uh, it's a long story, man. But it's hilarious because Lon Chaney will not be deterred. He's walking, he's running around the city, of course, you know, he's he's basically, he knows where they live or hang out in you know, local bars and, you know, and, and the restaurants around that part of the city and stuff like that and where they live. And he's, he's <laughs> he kills police officers on the way. Anybody gets in his way, man, he kills, including other people and stuff like that. You can't penetrate something, what he, Basically, what happens when he brought, was brought back to life? It made him indestructible. Bullets don't hurt him. You know, uh, stabbing himself doesn't hurt him. You know, uh, is this is pretty good, man? It's pretty good. I mean, every, the 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 L.A. Police Department. Uh, you know, the detectives are looking for him all through the movie, trying to track him down because he's incredibly dangerous. You know, he's indestructible. <laughs> Oh, hey, we're, we're talking 1956 here, man. You know, streetcars and all that kind of stuff, you know. And, you know, 19, mid-50s, 19 mid-50s crap, you know. Oh, I love that era, man. So fantastic. Let's watch some more of this, uh, this flicky, man. For a surprise. This is one of the guys who was part of the gang, man. <laughs> This is the main detective who wants to track down the money. See, a butcher dies today, so today is his execution. You seen the headlines, Captain? <clears throat> Tell it, Dad, just came in from San Francisco. Black and white, of course. Oh, excuse me, afternoon execution. Woo! Talk about that stolen money. Well, I still have hopes of coming up with something. <laughs> That's what I by for, Dick. Butcher's execution, the department's marking it case closed. But that you means you'll be reassigned. You can still work on it on your off hours. Trying to break this case. As far as I'm concerned, Butcher's death is just the beginning. Of course it is. Of course I, I can't prove it, but I think that Paul. Oh man, that that detective uh, detective is actually pretty damn cool. He will not give up. He's like he's like a bloodhound dog, man. He just keeps pushing and pushing, talking to Char. Actually, Lon Chaney's real name in this movie is called Charles the Butcher Benton, <laughs> and he has a girlfriend that he left the map uh, with. She's like a, a club dancer or something like that, uh, and it's in her uh, dressing room and stuff like that, and. You know, I don't know why he would leave the map with her. I would think that he would want to stash it, you know. It, it has the direction to all the money that he stole, the 600000 And it's in the sewer systems below the city, hidden a very special spot, like in that little hole or something in the wall. Or I can't remember exactly, but you'll see that scene probably as we go along. How much time are we up to in this damn review, anyway? 13 minutes. We got, we're only halfway done. <laughs> So, so you got these all the detectives trying to find. Uh, well, they find out that somebody's killing in the in the city, right? And the description fits Lon Chaney perfectly. And they find out he actually came back to life because of the two Frankenstein doctors, you know, who brought him back to life, who were supposedly trying to find a cure for cancer. Woo! And they actually brought back a cold-blooded killer, indestructible, you know. But anyway, Lon Chaney, like you said, he's searching the whole city for the three thugs, his lawyer and the other two thugs, like I said, who uh, participated in the armored car robbery with him. And, of course, he does find them, and he kills both them, you know. <laughs> he, he, like, snaps, he puts them over their heads, snaps their back, their spines, throws them off the three-story you know, buildings and stuff like that. Both of them end up getting murdered by Lon Chaney as in as part of his revenge, you know, for the for the other three, like I said, the three people who actually just set him up, you know. <laughs> He's, it's a great flick, man. I kind of like this flick a lot. I kind of like it because it has a lot of, uh, 
It's a, it's a good revenge story, you know? Let's watch some more of this shit. <laughs> I love this movie, man. This is a great flick. There's his girlfriend, supposedly Lon Chaney Jr. We'll call him Butcher Benton, because that's his name in the movie. Yep, he's dead already. They executed him 5 p.m. standard uh, California time. Feel so badly about you. If I'd known, maybe I could have done something. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is the, the this, this is the thug that set him up. The lawyer that was supposed, like I said, pro his name is Paul something. He's an asshole, man. That guy's a fucking asshole. He confesses the whole story at the end to the police so he doesn't get murdered by Butcher Benton. He's the only one that lives. Oh my god, let's fast forward this fucking movie. It's a good movie. I like this movie a lot. Anyway, so what happens, like I said, Lon Chaney is, uh, you know, searching the whole city trying to find all three of these thugs. And as, like I said, he finds two of them and he kills them. Oh, in a, you know, in a... Uh, some district of California, or I'm not sure if it's San Francisco, L.A., or whatever it is. And he, this guy right here, the scumball lawyer, he's so fucking scared that he turns himself into the police because everybody's being killed that comes in contact with Lon Chaney Jr. You know, he's determined to kill all three of these motherfuckers, man. And he got two so far, and he's trying to get this guy. This guy is such a coward. He turns in himself to the police you know they, they put him in protective custody because he knows he's going to be the third one murdered because they you know like i said he all three of them set up lon cheney at the beginning of the movie to die <laughs> oh such a good trio aren't they oh my god oh this is the scene where they bring what this is the scene where these two frankenstein fuckers bring back uh delon cheney jr here we go any trouble no, I just handed the money over and moved the body into your station wagon. That was this nice. is kind of like the beginning of the movie. Get a syringe. <laughs> this is, uh, Lon Chaney is just acting like he's dead on the fucking gurney or something, you know. We'll get other blood samples later. We'll run this. <laughs> you can't penetrate his skin with needles because he's indestructible. Even, like I said, bullets don't hurt him. He gets flame. Uh, he gets hit with a flamethrower at the end, but he still doesn't die. He's all melt, melt, you know, melted and all screwed up and everything. Yeah, I was. Well, well, just trust me. He, 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 they revive him, and of course he kills both these Frankenstein doctors. Of course, that's, you know, he has to kill everybody. All witnesses, you know, really, basically, all witnesses have to die. Is that normally the case? I think it is, right? You can't leave witnesses. <laughs> oh, anyway, I'm going to fast forward. To sh Should we watch him come back to life first? Oh, or, ooh, getting, I'm getting a cramp. That's not good. Cramp. Cramp. <laughs> I need a glass of water. Morphine was dead than alive. Throw the switch. I don't know why they're in the basement of some factory or something. Oh! Old Frankenstein movies, Wolfman movies. Look at that shit. 250 million volts! <laughs> oh, we're gonna fast forward it. Anyway, that's kind of like the beginning of the movie when he's uh, basically brought back to life, and I would explain a lot of the upcoming scenes anyway when he starts killing people trying to find the three thugs and set them up for death. <laughs> oh my god, let's do this one right here. We're gonna just move on here. Okay, I think this is where he comes back to, oh here he is. He's coming back to life. We're gonna show that scene. You are so lucky.
Poor Lon Chaney Jr., man. He still remembers everything and he's fucking pissed. <laughs> Here he goes. Ah. You mustn't move. Ah, we'll just. Ah, fuck this shit. Trust me, he kills the two Frankenstein doctors. He kills them. You know, anyway, so like I said, you know, there's a manhunt going on in L.A. trying to find uh, Butcher Benton, of course. And Butcher Benton has to kill all three of the thugs and then retrieve the money in the sewer system. You know, where it's, it's like I said, it's, it's somewhere down in the sewer system, of course, which he does eventually find it at the end. But in court, unfortunately for him, there's, there's, you know, shitloads of cops down there, you know, searching for him. And they end up forcing him out of the sewer and he has to leave all the money behind. And then he has to flee out of the sewer systems, you know, to some kind of a, I'm not sure what kind of plant it is, is uh, hydro, I'm not sure, we'll, we'll see though, we'll see. He gets electrocuted at the end, Lon Chaney Jr. up on the scaffolding, uh, scaffolding and stuff like that. And uh, unfortunately, he has a very sad ending, you know, and stuff like that. But that's okay. We all know it's a fake anyway, right? <laughs> Just relax. I I'm a doctor. I, I saved your life. Do you understand me? You're in my laboratory. The execution was carried out. You were declared dead. <laughs> I tried an experiment on you and brought you back to life, although I didn't intend that. <laughs> now you have a great shot now. So go back to uh, go back to bed, uh, Billy. I'll give you some 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 uh, tang. Ah, we don't need to see this. I think I've already explained it like five times. We're gonna fast forward. Uh, His strength is like that of twenty-five. Where he's killing these two guys right there. Probably crush their uh, their throats, their neck. <laughs> oh my god. We gotta really fast forward this a lot further because frankly I'm kinda going over the same, rehashing the same uh, shit here. So let me see something here. Okay. So basically, this is the detective that has the, has the hots for uh, Butcher Benton's girlfriend. He's that's the guy that cracks the case. I just made the day, I mean. Look at that coy fucker, man. He just knows what he wants. He want he wants he wants some bedtime. I haven't had hamburger in the backseat of an automobile with a guy in those lot of years. <laughs> no, we'll do it more often. But I always figured a policeman was You know, a she's really not a was Butcher Benton's girlfriend. He just likes her and he left uh, the, the the map to the money with her because he kind of thinks that she has a thing for him, but she really doesn't. She turns out falling in love with this guy, you know, right out towards the end of the movie, the the detective right there. And as long as the world's filled with people have to be men who enforce the laws. <laughs> what made you join the department? No, who's making I it? I wanted to get some it's pussy. Honest, I'd love to know. Well, it's really a very... Okay. It's enough of that shit. Anyway, as the movie just kind of goes along, goes along, you know, the manhunt is underway for Lon Chaney Jr., uh, Butcher Benton, and of course, he, he kills a couple of people on the way. He kills this guy... He's trying to fix this. Uh, the guy has a flat tire and stuff on his car, and he, he picks it up, of course. Lon Chaney's super strong, and the guy changes his tire, and of course, he, he uh, kills the poor guy that uh, he was helping. But he leaves a the girl there, which is fine, you know. And she, she testifies in front of the, you know, to the detectives that it was, it was Lon Chaney Jr. that did this. Of course, they didn't really, they really don't believe he's alive until they, they see fingerprints and everything like that, like on the, on the bumper of the car. They kind of figured somehow he's come back to life. I'm not sure how they figured it out, but you know they find out the, you know, well he's he's alive again. He uh, survived the execution. Frankenstein's brought him back to life. 
<laughs> we'll just call them the Frankenstein twins. You know, they're already dead, so it doesn't make any difference for them anymore. They're going to be buried, you know, and stuff like that. They're in the fucking morgue. <laughs> Okay, let's fast forward. Let's go on. Let's get, let's get some more scenes going here. Okay, what scene are we going to do now? Or well, maybe none. <laughs> well, when the screen test didn't work out, though, why didn't you go on home? Well, first you had to. Look, you need. Four! Shut up, you three Well, look who's calling me. There's one of the little thugs that gets, that gets killed by Lon Chaney Jr. Of course, Paul Lowe, his scumball lawyer, that turns himself, like I said, into the detective of the police department. He's afraid he's going to have his neck snapped. <laughs> Yeah, you don't have to see that scene. You'll get one. You'll get one. You sober enough to understand? I got a job for you again. I don't care if you're gonna get killed by Lon Chaney Jr., man. Butcher Benton. You, I got a job for you, you punk ass motherfucker. <laughs> oh, anyway, it's got it's got a lot of cool little actors. I mean, it's a really well acted movie. I mean, you know, I mean, for 1956. 19, uh, now he's killing, uh, he just killed this guy. There's some nice cars in this goddamn movie. We're talking 1956, which really pretty damn cool cars, man. I love the 50s cars, man. Ooh, they're awesome, man. So, like I said, the movie just kind of progresses along, and they finally trap him in the sewers at the end after he's killed two of the, his, uh, coal armored car robber banker friends. <laughs> And of course, the the attorney's already turned himself into the police because he's so scared he's going to die next. And they decide to hold him, even though they get a full confession out of him, you know, that he and uh, Lon Chaney Jr. and the other two thugs basically set up the armored car robbery for 600000 grand, you know. So they have his confession. He's going to prison probably for, you know, the rest of his life, that attorney and everything like that. So... But anyway, they, they, you know, they're, they're searching the whole city, you know, and trying to find uh, Butcher Benton and stuff like that. And they, like I said, they track him down in the sewer. And then, of course, like I said, he gets out of the sewer without the money. And, of course, he's scrambling around the city trying to stay away from the detectives. And he ends up at this kind of like uh, some, some kind of plant or something. I mean, I'm not even sure what kind of a plant this is. But he gets electrocuted. And, of course, he dies. Okay, now we got another scene. Let's see what we're doing here, man. I'm just kind of fast forwarding a little bit because there's too many scenes. He can't talk, of course, Lon Chaney. His throat was all charred during uh, uh, that operation. Two Frankenstein's kind of brought him back to life. Fuck this shit. This one's as well. I'm going to another scene, man. <laughs> oh, like I said, uh, uh, Lon Chaney's so-called girlfriend works at this this uh, dance club or something like that, you know. the butcher before he arrived at Squeamy's hotel, or failing that, at least be able to warn him to stay out of sight. Stay out of sight, man, or you're gonna you're gonna end up dying, man. You want to meet Captain? Yeah, I just had a rundown on those fingerprints, a stolen car up north. I got nothing on the driver who was killed or the woman with him. Yeah, I'm just screwing around here, man. Never mind what I'm doing. I'm just fast forwarding to certain scenes. He's on a manhunt to get the three thugs. Butcher Benton. <laughs> little guy he gets him first man yeah oh, this is so funny man you know the soundtrack's kind of cool it's kind of 
dynamic sounding. I'm not really sure how to explain it. You can hear the soundtrack. It's actually pretty cool. I don't know if we really need to see this movie anymore. <laughs> We're up to about 28, 29 minutes. This is like, oh my, okay, okay. Let's see if we can get to a really good scene. Oh, sorry about that. There's another, there's another little thug he's going to kill. That's the other uh, third, uh, fourth member of the party. Oh, God. I got I to gotta cut this review down to nothing here. Shaw, owner of the station wagon. The San Francisco police located his laboratory in the basement of an electrical power receiving station. <laughs> Shaw, what's he know? He's dead. And another man, too, is assistant. This is a Frankenstein and Frankenstein Jr. are dead. Benton's body never... <laughs> Come on, man. Get to the fucking good scenes here. Uh, this is where the lawyer uh, uh, pleads for... Uh, he gets... Uh, Thank you. He's spilling his guts. Come up with anything yet, Dick? We've checked every hotel, motel. Yeah, fuck it, man. We run a cross check on every hangout butcher ever used. That results blank. Anyway, like I said, the ending is kind of tragic for uh, Butcher Benton, Lon Chaney Jr. He kind of gets uh, pushed into this big industrial plant or something like that. And he gets electrocuted at the end and stuff like that. And of course, the story's over. The detective gets his ex-girlfriend, and uh, it has a happy ending and stuff like that for everybody involved. <laughs> it's just, you know, I don't know. I'm not even sure if this review is very good, but you kind of seen some scenes, you know, and just, it's not really, it's, you know, how much time are we up to first? And before we get back to the dramatic ending, 32 minutes, we got to shut this down. But anyway, I'm going to rate this movie right now just because I kind of like this movie. It has a lot of good actors in it. I have my little crib notes here. Lon Chaney Jr., Ross Elliott, Robert uh, Shane, Marvin Ellis, directed by, uh, I don't know who this is. <laughs> uh, Vi Russell, Sue DeWiggins, a lot of good actors. Everybody actually does a pretty good job in this movie. You know, it's black and white, of course, 1956. I'm not sure what the length, the running time is, but it's actually... I'm not really, I couldn't find the running time on it. I'm going to have to scour the internet for that, you know, before I do all my my uh, my information down below for, uh, you know, all the credits and everything. But technically, it's a cool movie. You know, Lon Chaney doesn't say one damn thing. That's how he's supposed to uh, do his role, of course. And he does it perfectly, you know. Not one, he can't even mutter. <laughs> Anyway, we're going to, well, anyway, like I said, I gave you kind of a scenario, a rundown of the whole movie. You saw some scenes, you know, you, you listen to the detectives, you talk to, you listen to his girlfriend, the corrupt attorney, and all the people in this, in the part of the city who are involved with the crime and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, Lon Chaney has a tragic end, uh, tragic ending to his life in this movie because he gets electrocuted at that big industrial plant. Maybe it's an electrical plant or something. I don't, I'm not going to show you that scene. It's kind of grisly. He just kind of gets, he just kind of gets all of his energy zapped out of him, and then he just kind of like dies, falls from the the uh, skyscraper, or the the scaffolding, you know, to his death below. He's already dead anyway, you know. And that's the end of the story. I already told you the end of the story, right? That's that's how it ends. We're gonna write this movie though. Okay, let's first let's talk about. The picture quality is pretty good. There's a few bright spots on the DVD. Uh, I try to adjust the webcam so it looks a little darker so you can kind of make out the, the characters and everything. I always try to do that before I do movie reviews just because I want it to look good when I play it back on my YouTube channel. And uh, the story is pretty damn good. It's a pretty, it's like a crime drama. It's not really a sci, well maybe it's a little sci-fi. Not horror, but a little bit of sci-fi. It's a crime drama, you know, gangsters and armored car uh, uh, robbers and crap like that, you know, and detectives in love with people and you know, the girls at the club and stuff like that. And, you know, technically, like I said, technically it's a pretty good movie. 
You know, I was making, I make some fun of it, but don't, just never mind that. It's actually a pretty good movie. You want to go check it out, go to YouTube. You can probably watch a whole movie for free, see a bunch of trailers, stuff like that. I'm just kind of giving you a little quick 30-minute uh, preview of the movie, like a rundown. That's all I ever do. Spidey just kind of goofs around when he does these movie reviews, right? So we're going to rate this movie, then i got to get going because we are up way past my allotted time. We're going to add one, you know, I normally rate my movies... 1 to 10 spider webs, and we're going to give this movie a 7.5 because it's actually a pretty good movie. It's silly, but it's actually a pretty damn good story. The acting's good, uh, the photography is good, the music is kind of dramatic sounding. It's got a lot of uh, good uh, performances by the actors. It's more of a serious movie. It's not really, it's not like I said, it's not a not it's, there's no comedy in this movie folks it's all it's all tragic you know <laughs> you know re, it's basically a revenge movie and of course lon cheney gets his revenge but he has to die at the end he pays the price a second time you know and stuff like that so seven and a half spider webs for instruct indestructible man indestructible man so i'm gonna get going and we will see you probably in a couple of days i'm not really too sure I have to find another doozy to review. Let me get this goddamn webcam off. So we will see you later, man. I hope you liked the review. Give me some comments below, and I will see you at the movies in yeah, maybe a couple days. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe a week from now. I don't know. Until then, take care.